Welcome to this uh, episode of One More Round. We have Evelina. Now, Evelina, when it comes to surnames, I never want to crash them. <laughs> so, what is the surname? I know you're from Lithuania. Yes, How I am. How do you say your surname? Uh, well, if you want to attempt and break we'll your try. tongue, it's uh, Zimanevichute. Zimanevichute. <laughs> How was that? Nearly. It was the last bit I got wrong, wasn't Zimanevichute. it? Zimanevichute. Okay. All right. I'm just going to call her Evelina. Is that that okay? will do, yeah. <laughs> so, Evelina, how are you today? You good? I'm awesome, and you? Yeah, I'm doing well, and uh, really looking forward to today's interview. Yeah, great. Um, I think, you know, the world is getting smaller, and we're starting yeah, to sure. connect, aren't we, through, uh, you know, continue to connect through social media. Um, for people that don't know you, Evelina, I always like to kind of put people at the forefront of what they do. So if we were to find you on the like the shelf of a supermarket <laughs> and it says kind of, you know, this is what's in in what you're buying. This is the contents. Like what's the contents of you? What what are you made of? What's inside? Ooh, okay. Well, um so I'm learning and development coach. Okay. So I guess what would be packaged in my box is yeah. is coaching, consulting and and training. And what I really do is um, helping businesses, especially maybe when they ex expand very quickly or maybe when they're going through a very quick change mm -hmm. or some sort of restructuring, it always creates a gap in people's skills and abilities. So I help to upskill and develop people so they can, they can deliver results for, for the business. Very nice, so that's, yeah. that's a nice professional angle. What about, what about the personal <laughs> Evelina? Yeah, well, what, what I've started my journey with and, mm. and how I ended up here. So this is probably, you know, the final stop where I am, where I am now. Obviously, there is, there's many more to come. But um, I've started with more therapeutic background. Okay. So I always looked at what makes a difference between certain individuals who um, you know, you throw anything at them, anything happens and they just take on all the challenges mm -hmm. and, and, and grow with it. Mm -hmm. And then some others who will end up, uh, you know, on the other hand, depressed, stressed and yeah. suicidal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what is the difference? And as well for me, you know, coming from Lithuania now over a decade ago without even speaking the language, you know, I've, I've taken this on and, and thought, right, you know, there's a ground ahead of me. Let's let's plow. Let's let's make the most out of it. Yeah. Um, and I volunteered as well um, at the charity called Maitri, that, where I worked with suicidal people. And I, you know, at the beginning, I could not comprehend the difference. You know, why is it that, you know, I can be in this different country without yeah. speaking the language, without having any resources? Yeah. Um, and I'm fine. I never feel like I don't want to live. We mm -hmm. keep going. Mm -hmm. And then others, you know, don't have the same level of resilience. So, um, all of my journey started with that, yep. um, studying neuroscience, uh, interpersonal neurobiology, psychology, um, really trying to understand what makes a difference in, yep. in our brains, in our mm -hmm. hearts, mm -hmm. uh, what, what that is. So um, Nice. Yeah. So what, what about an environment where you are taking time out for you? Like, so outside of, of the work that you do, mm. And I know there's always a crossover for us because yeah, we, we're 24 course, seven, aren't we? Yeah. You yeah. know, we, we're always on. We don't always fully switch off because you know, the nature of, of the work that we do. Um, but what environment is, is, is a good environment for you to really be able to breathe? What does that look like? Oh, well, I love being in nature. I yeah. love uh, learning languages. Yeah. I love exploring different cultures, history. Um, so, yeah, just people overall, you know, makes me excited and interested in getting to know different people, mm -hmm. how um, every, what, each of us have different map of the world. Yep. How do we see things differently? Yep. And again, how that creates different cultures mm. and different um, languages, mm -hmm. different ways of being and doing things. It's, 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 it's really fascinating. So um, I love being outdoors in nature exploring traveling um, where I feel most alive it's probably when I do yoga okay so that's my go-to yep. place 
Yep. Um, I love reading books as well, so I have a little library of my own where, um, yeah, I, I, I collect some mm -hmm. rare collectible books and. Uh, you got a favorite? Got a favorite there. book that you would say this is this is worth its weight in gold? Um, there are many, many books really that uh, that that I like. I, I say one one of the books of no novels that I would read would probably be The Portrait of Dorian Gray. Okay. So I think that's that's my favorite um, book. And there is so many of them that, that I read for research and, and business and, and so on. So one that probably shaped quite a bit of, of what I'm doing would yeah. be Mindsight by okay. Daniel Siegel. Okay, yeah, yeah. So that's, that really explains, you know, how our brains and how our, our um, how we are shaped by our interactions with others and experiences nice. and how then um, in turn that determines how we react mm. to environment, how, mm. how uh, we create yeah. our reality from there, our map of the world and, and, and how we can change it. Yeah. And who, who would you say has had the greatest influence then? Because if it, that book sounds very good in terms of the experiences, but also mm. the people. Who would you yeah. say in your life's had the had the big, biggest impact? It's my dad. Okay. Um, when when I was growing up, I always saw my dad working really, really hard to provide for me and my brother. And very interestingly, I could not understand for a very long time what he was doing. Mm. So it's only and and actually, you know, even when I was a teenager, I probably was quite upset with my dad for you know not spending enough time with us and uh, working late nights and um, only when I left and came to Lithu to from Lithuania to England mm. that it was my dad who I missed first mm. and who I realized that the hard work that he was doing he was preparing me for this mm -hmm. to be there and to take it on and for all of that hard work that, that he was doing so mm. it's really a lot of hard work but yet very uh, kind and generous in spirit our doors of our house would always be open for anybody who would ever need anything so in our little little village <laughs> everybody would come knocking on our doors whatever that is that they would need so um yeah Hard work and, and generosity and kindness of spirit, yeah. I like that. Mm. Beautiful. Give it up for mm. Dan. <laughs> <laughs>
Singapore hotel. And there was this one, um, one day when I was uh, cleaning a toilet mm -hmm. <laughs> and there was a supervisor wasn't even my supervisor he's um, just somebody else who worked in that in that hotel very very unpleasant person um, if you could imagine um, I don't know um, human form of a pig okay. that would be him <laughs> sweaty greasy I hope he sees this. I hope he does. <laughs> and uh, really really um, unpleasant person and uh, he came into into the room when 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 i was cleaning he put uh, do not disturb card on the outside of the door he he locked it and he was coming towards me un undoing his belt oh wow um and i ran from there i was very lucky that i was actually cleaning a double room which had a um, separate door okay. open so i could actually run away um there and and i remember like now I, I i ran out of that hotel in my you know blue checked uniform with a <laughs> with all of the cleaners uh, <laughs> uniform and stuff, yeah. there and and i was running uh, across oxford street and it was busy rush hour and and i was running and in my head i uh, could hear my mom's voice saying you are better than this you are better than this you are better than this and um, yeah and, and and next day I, uh, I, I just thought right you know uh, I didn't come here to do this kind Absolutely, of work yeah. I'm not here for that I'm better than this yes and um, yeah it was very interesting because once once I kind of had that energy in me then all sort of serendipitous events started to happen to, yes. to, to kind of create things from from there and um, I walked in into Pret-a-Manger mm -hmm. and thinking that it's a French company because yes. I didn't speak English but I spoke yeah. French so right. I thought great so I walk in into busy Oxford Street in the middle of lunch hour I somehow managed to ask for a manager to 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 come in and I started speaking to him in French and I had um, long blonde hair then you know and i'm standing there talking to this this tall skinny italian guy looking down on me and i'm you know standing there flicking my hair talking to him in french how good i am how he should employ me and he stood listening there i don't know 10 15 minutes and then he says i don't speak french and we're not <laughs> french company <laughs> That's funny. but the, the funniest thing was that he did employ me even though he didn't need me there, right. he employed me. He uh, opened for me bank account. Aww. He uh, sorted for me things like national insurance and all the documents. And he sent me to work in Canary Wharf, uh, just one of his colleagues who actually needed uh, oh. someone. So, you know, it's 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 incredible. And 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 somehow things happened from there. Yep. Um, there was a lot of uh, Polish people working there. And I also do speak Polish, so they helped me. They helped me to train me. They helped me to, you know, work uh, from there. And and um, yeah, slowly, slowly, I, I kind of start building from 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 there. So that's one that's more fantastic. round. <laughs> there's, a, there's a quote that says, "Insult mm. is a wonderful motivator." Mm. And obviously, you know, based on the beautiful story you shared about, you know, with your father and, and your home and your impression, which is you know, to have an open house, to be generous, yeah. and then a man violate, you know, mm. that must have been really difficult for, for you. But it seems like you you transitioned that, that energy in a way uh, to actually better yourself. Yeah, but for me, I was always curious, you see, from where do I have that strength? Yes. You know, from where, how on earth? Did I have that strength to pick myself up and say that I'm better than this yes. and not make the conclusions that this always happens to me, I'm Victim, this, yeah. I'm that, you know? Mm. So um, that's where my journey then taken me because all of the research that I've been doing, I was yeah. really trying to answer that question. Yeah. What makes somebody really uh, resilient to yes. whatever that is? Yeah. And, and again, Part of me thought that is, you know, it's this, you know, hard work, you know, power and attitude that you just never give up, never give up, never yeah, give up. Yes. And I kept working 
yeah. working hard and, and, and I thought, okay, if I ended up being in this country where I haven't planned to live here, I came yeah. for holidays and yeah. I ended up staying yeah. and uh, I wanted to make the most out of it. So I went on to have a child, to study full time, to work full time and do all of these things at the same time, as well as volunteering mm -hmm. to help some suicidal people in a yeah. charity, um, sleeping four hours a night and until I burned out, yeah. you know, until I ended up again, you know, collapsed on the floor uh, and and find out that I have a tumor as well. And again, that's yet another round, you know, yeah. where you again have to learn how to create work life balance, how you learn to look after yourself. Yes. So there is that one side of you that never gives up yeah. and wants to keep going. Yeah. But it's still very important to come back and look after yourself yeah. as well. Yeah. And what do you say to someone who's gone through something difficult and they're and they're knocked out on the floor? What's your what's your message to someone like that that's going through something really difficult right now? You are better than this. Yeah. <laughs> and I think we always can do better than what we think. We are our own biggest critics. It's very easy to criticize ourselves. It's very easy to to say I'm not good enough. It's very easy to say this always happens to me. But if you, for, for anybody who's ever struggling, I would always think instead of saying that I can't do this, always think, how can I do this? Yeah. And don't even ask, can I do this or not? Because you will find excuses why you can't. Yeah. But if you ask yourself question, how? Mm -hmm. you'll, you'll find a way. So mm -hmm. you'll find reasons to get up. You'll yeah. find reasons to, to fight for it, yeah. for it. If you just connect to that, that purpose of why you're doing it and, and how how you can get there. Yeah. Love that. Okay, so uh, thank you for just sharing like so openly. Cause, uh, I think, you know, our, our stories are who make, you know, our life. Yeah. Uh, and even when we leave this earth, it, it's people are going to continue to know us through the stories, you know, that, that have been shared and that we share. You obviously shared some, some difficulty, like, you know, that man being grim, you know, and then, <laughs> and then your own pushing yourself to the limit. Uh, and then, you know, obviously, you know, you had a tumor and you came out of that. And I know from from just speaking to you now that a lot of mm. uh, the situations in your life that you've experienced have, have kind of shaped uh, and popped you into the area in which you're in now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So do you feel like that the things that you went through have really shaped now where your focus is? And what is it exactly that, that you're doing, you know, with your life? Well, absolutely. So I think things that I do today with my business and, and things that I'm trying to create, it's, it's really empowering individuals and businesses to develop a little bit more of that resilience, to yeah. stand up against whatever that life throws at you. Yeah. Um, one big part of that is, again, how we manage stress. And again, me ending up, uh, you know, for several years, sleeping four hours a night and, and not having proper work-life balance, yeah. not looking after myself, you know, I thought that's the way to success, right? I've progressed very quickly through my career and I thought that's the way to go mm. until, you know, you really burn out and yes. you find yourself in that place. So um, there's a lot of things that I had to learn how to look after myself first and how to bring that work-life balance back, how to align your emotions, your your head, your, your, your heart, and, and really utilize it in a way to create results in life from you mm. and really take control of that, create success on your own terms, not yeah. just necessarily what happens to you. Yeah. So a big part of that is, is helping people and individuals and, and businesses to deal with stress. So stress and well-being programs is one of one of the things that I share and I give a lot of free talks and public speaking about that because um, stress is still such a big cost for businesses yeah. and it's, it's, it's really unnecessary and yet it's still, we still know so little about how we create that resilience from inside out. Yeah. So even if you look at the research, Things like stress is is still a list of external causes of 
pressures and demands and changes and no support from line managers and 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 structure and and unpredictability mm -hmm. and and so on if we learn uh, how to deal with that ourselves then it doesn't matter what what happens so that's my message that i take to corporates and to to start any people development leadership programs people development from well-being um, yeah. programs yeah and and then from there that's that's where where people can grow and and i'm very very passionate about uh, training people training managers into leaders yeah. and and working with with some executives uh, directors business owners decision makers i would say in businesses who can really create influence mm. on on a, on a bigger scale mm. who have uh, infrastructure of, of businesses that they that they run and 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 people that um that they can reach out and and really make a change mm -hmm. in uh, in developing us into better human beings who mm -hmm. can take more and do more and be more productive more successful shape that yeah. business in a yeah. way that is sustainable in a in a in a long run yeah. as technology and innovation and change everything is happening so quickly mm. it's not enough to train people for specific skills mm -hmm. we need to be prepared to deal with change and yeah. that's the only way to make sustainable business i think yeah mm. stress is something that we we all face mm. Um, could there could there be two things that you could share that are really simplistic but maybe a little different from what we may have heard or read that you feel are a good way to, to manage that, that process? Absolutely, with stress again. So first of all, not thinking that stress is bad. Stress can be good for you yep. if we only know how to control the level okay. of that stress. And the easiest way to control that level of anxiety or stress that we get get into is simply by being in a present moment. Okay. A lot of our stresses and anxieties are created by our expectations and a gap between where you are right now or your current skills and abilities and where you want to go. So you're worrying about the presentation, about the mortgage, you uh, laying awake at night, stressed about bills to pay. That's really got nothing to do with that specific moment. Mm -hmm. And just simply by tuning into um, external environment and noticing everything that you see, everything that you hear, everything that you feel, learning how to be present mm. can reduce that 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 anxiety and, and stress there and then. And of course, there are a lot of other techniques in terms of developing your positive mindset um, mm. and from where we can make better decisions. So, mm. so essentially what I'm training people is to learn how to create a gap mm -hmm. between a trigger and response. So when something externally happens and you go off and you do what you always do, you get into your usual habits, your unhealthy routines you snap you get angry you have a drink you eat a whole chocolate cake whatever that might be that people's escapes are right there are always a better way to make decisions by making a conscious choice between that trigger and response and that's that's a difficult thing to do there is there is a training in there mm -hmm. involved um, in a way we need to train our brains to learn new habits mm. and create new neurological pathways that can allow us to create that space between trigger and response. Yeah. I like that. Mm. So yeah, because stress is like so predominant, mm. like like that what you've said. And I think you know, for you to share a couple of things like you have, uh, I think it's really helpful. Now, in terms of people engaging with you uh, and being able to have a discussion, you know, with you personally, what's the best ways yeah. for them to do that? Well, the best way to reach me is on LinkedIn. Okay. Um, I, yeah, I, Are we I even connected to... on LinkedIn? Well, <laughs> I, I, I think so. I'm not sure. I think sure. the surname we'll may stump some people. <laughs> you may have to... Uh... Yeah, so um, my website is uh, elitemind.co.uk Elite Mind. okay. and I have Elite Mind Academy where I train and develop people as part of that, as part of that consulting. So absolutely, they can reach me there. Uh, as well as on Facebook and, and, and Instagram. 
Um, but I think still LinkedIn would be a good place to go yep. to. And if anyone would like to make an appointment with me or yep. a call, I, uh, I have a link directly to my calendar, which is elitemind.as.me. And this way you have access to my calendar and you can yeah, book a coffee with me nice. or... Uh, You've just given your life or a, away. Or, or a calendar. You're going and... to be swamped. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just to end then, one final thought then mm. um, that you'd like to share, you know, something that really burns for you, either an idea or some kind of value or maybe a, a, something for somebody to really ponder, you know, for, mm. the, for the rest of the year. Oh, one idea. When I think it's important to realize who you really are and what is the life that you want to create. And instead of thinking of who you should be or what others want you to be, is to really learn how to reconnect your own values and your own belief and create life on your own terms. Mm -hmm. So, yeah be brave and live life on your on your own terms lovely yeah. i loved it <laughs> <Bravo>. <laughs>